Good evening, I'm Tanushi Ramesh and welcome to the evening updates. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister today received the Speaker of the National Assembly of the Republic of Korea, His Excellency Park Byung Sek at the Rifa Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister highlighted the steady growth of relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Korea, which continues to receive the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Regional and international issues of common interest as well as efforts to combat the COVID-19 were also discussed. For his part, His Excellency Byung Sek congratulated His Royal Highness on the 20th anniversary of the National Action Charter highlighting its contributions in the Kingdom's continued progress and development. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Her Excellency Fauzia Abdullah Zainal, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, His Excellency Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. Under the patronage of Bahrain Defence Force, Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmad Al Khalifa, a ceremony was held to inaugurate modern training facilities that included a training wing, a lecture hall, a building similar to archery and shooting field. The ceremony coincided with the anniversary of the establishment of the Bahrain Defence Force on February 5th. Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Tayyab bin Sakar Al Nuemi toured the premises where he was briefed on the modern training facilities, equipment and technologies in the military field. An ambitious enterprise to develop Al Fateh Highway and Case Heavy Traffic will be launched in April. Minister of Works, Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning, Assam bin Abdullah Khalif, has said. The works extending from Sheikh Hamad Causeway in the north to the Mina Salman intersection in the south will also provide alternative options for the Jafar area. The main works will include expanding Al Fateh Highway in four lanes in each direction with the construction of a three-lane tunnel each way at the intersection of Al Fateh Highway with a wall road and a provision of a ground intersection controlled by traffic lights. They will also feature the construction of an overpass with two lanes for traffic going from north of Manama to Al Fateh Highway to Prince Saud Al Fazl Road in Jafar, while the current intersection of Al Fateh Highway with Sheikh Tej Road at will be closed. The Health Ministry has announced the death of a 50-year-old Bahraini woman from COVID-19 today. This takes the total number of fatalities in the kingdom to 404. Bahrain yesterday registered 640 new cases of COVID-19 alongside 679 recoveries and 5 fatalities. Of the new cases, 272 were expat workers, 356 contact with active cases and 12 travel-related. Of the 7,172 active cases, 142 were receiving treatment and 57 in critical condition. Housing Minister Basin bin Yaqub al Hamad today received the Member of Council of Representatives MP Yusuf al Tawadi and discussed with him topics related to Mohara Governate's 8th constituency. The two sides discussed ways to enhance cooperation between the Council of Representatives and the Housing Ministry as well as supporting the Ministry's plans to meet the housing demands on the waiting lists through accelerating work on the ongoing housing projects. They also reviewed the progress of the housing projects in Bahrain's new towns and the Ministry's plans to meet the housing demands across the Kingdom's governates, especially Moharak. The Real Estate Regulatory Authority has taken measures against a number of licenses for non-compliance with the requirements to combat money laundering. Our ERA has clarified that in an implementation of Resolution of 2019 on the obligations related to procedures of money laundering and terrorism financing prevention in licensed real estate activities, violations have been detected by a number of licenses, including some real estate developers who have not complied with RERA's guidelines regarding the National Risk Assessment Report and the filing out of an electronic off-site inspection questionnaire related to anti-money laundering. 
InvestCorp has announced that one of InvestCorp's affiliates has acquired a portfolio of 13 multi-let industrial assets in South Wales. The acquisition continues InvestCorp's strategy of investing in industrial real estate and represents the first real estate investment in Welsh market. The acquisition marks InvestCorp's 11th property investment in the UK since launching its European real estate business in 2017, having consistently grown to the platform and deploying approximately 800 million euros across the European portfolio. This includes acquiring more than 40 industrial and logistics properties in the UK, with a combined area of approximately 4 million square feet. Mohammad Mahmoud Al Khaja has been sworn in as the new UAE ambassador to Israel. Al Khaja took the oath in front of UAE Vice President, Prime Minister, and ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. The ceremony comes after the cabinet approved the setting up of an embassy in Tel Aviv last month. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid wished Al Khaja success in his mission and called on him to work on consolidate relations between the UAE and Israel in a way that promotes a culture of peace, coexistence and tolerance, the report said. The UAE and Israel signed a US broker deal on September 15, known as the Abraham Accords, which established diplomatic relations between the two countries for the first time. An apartment building in Cairo partially collapsed overnight, killing at least three people, Egyptian officials said today. By late morning, rescue workers were still searching for possible survivors trapped under the rubble of the two-story building in Rod al Farag neighborhood of the Egyptian capital. The three dead were all from one family, the state-run al Aram Daily reported. In December, five people were killed when an apartment building collapsed in Alexandria. The government has recently launched a crackdown on illegal construction across the country jailing and fining violators and in many cases demolishing the buildings. Thank you and stay updated with the news of Bahrain.